Greetings, nerdy list aficionados. We're back in the MCU because you love it here. So the MCU has made some pretty significant changes to the comics verse in order to facilitate a cohesive MCU universe and tell the stories it wants to tell. Fans have loved some changes and hated others. So in no particular order, we're gonna take a look at some of the most interesting, and if you like it, we'll do it again. There's been a lot of changes. I'm Sasha and let's get started. These are the top 10 times Marvel changed the MCU. Star-Lord's father. When Guardians of the Galaxy was released in 2014, it surprised the world with how well it did, as it focused on a group of heroes that not many people were all that familiar with, and reignited interest in the group and the comics fandom. For people who were in the know, they knew that Peter Quill's father was Jason of Spartax, who crashed on Earth and fell in love with Meredith Quill and ultimately left without ever knowing she was pregnant. The King of Spartax, for yes he was the king, has since come into conflict with his son, trying to both capture and destroy him, only to be halted by Captain Marvel. So it was well known in canon that Jason was just a bit of a jerk, so sending Ravagers to kidnap his son didn't seem too far out of left field. However, in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Star-Lord's father was revealed to be Ego, the living planet, who made himself manifest, seducing women to try and create another celestial so that he could conquer and terraform the galaxy. This is one of those changes that for many fell into the okay, but why though category. Especially as actually as the Marvel Universe has continued to expand, more interesting stories could potentially have been told with the King of Spartax, though it may not have seemed that way initially. Still, at least Guardians 2 gave us some trippy space warps and later that Hellraiser reconstruction visual. Number nine, Magneto's twins. So this was a change but out of necessity due to a lack of access to the rights to certain words and terms necessary to complete the twins' backstory. The Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver have existed in an intriguing legal realm for decades though that time may be coming to an end. They existed in this world, wherein they were Magneto's children, a reigning X-Men villain, and hence mutants, but were also both on the Avengers roster, which fell under a different jurisdiction adaptation-wise. The solution was to still have the twins and have them join the Avengers, but make no mention of their mutant parentage, and to change their backstory, to having them be victims of Hydra's experiments, modified and changed through those means. Also, they fridged Quicksilver real quick. Remember all those he's still alive theories and headcanons that were going around? Some still are. So this way, we got to have the twins, but not their full backstory, which in a way makes them feel more fully entrenched in the MCU. Number eight. Tony Stark builds Ultron. So this was a pretty big change that stems from the lack of Hank Pym and the Avengers at that time, as well as the MCU's need to continually have Tony play out the whole he's a genius with good intentions but they exceed his foresight plot. So in the comics, Hank Pym creates Ultron with a full body. However, Ultron proved to be unstable, partially as a result of Pym's own instability, as Ultron's brain patterns were modeled after his own. Ultron continually felt the need to upgrade himself, creating newer, more advanced bodies, driven by a need to prove himself and best Hank Pym. Ultron became more and more dangerous as he insidiously tries to tear the Avengers apart. So it's pretty similar minus the shift in creator, which people credit to fitting better with Tony's arc in the MCU and also the fact that Pym hadn't been introduced yet and when he would be he was older and a second tier mentor figure to the new Ant-Man. And I swear, it's because of this panel. So few people know the context, but it comes up again and again and again. Sometimes it just takes one panel to ensure your character will never be properly adapted. Number seven, Agent Coulson. So people love Clark Gregg as Coulson. He has been around since the birth of the MCU all the way back in 2008 with Iron Man. But did you know that there is no Coulson in the comic verse? There is not. He is purely a film-based creation and a welcome addition too. He was even utilized as the catalyst to bring the team together in 2012 during the Avengers. His presence also managed to give Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. a huge leg up because you guessed it, he didn't die, he got better. This is one addition people are pretty happy with. Number six, the Mandarin. Oh, Iron Man 3. Do you ever notice how rarely people talk about this one? So from the start, the adaptation of one of Iron Man's iconic villains proved to be a problem people were complaining about. They were afraid it would be racist to depict him as Asian, but then to not would be whitewashing, that to change his character would remove too much of his motivation. And ultimately, all of this led to one of the most hated adaptations of the character ever. At first, it looked as though the fears people had were going to come to naught, as Ben Kingsley was portraying a credible Mandarin. However, midway through the film, he is revealed to be an actor hired by the true Mandarin of the film, a generic and lackluster villain played by Guy Pearce. It was always me, Tony, right from the start. I am the Mandarin! 
Essentially, this was a very disappointing display from one of Iron Man's most iconic villains, who constantly forced him into a battle of science versus magic. And the MCU had magic, even if it wasn't Doctor Strange levels of overt yet. Iron Man 3 had its strengths and weaknesses, but the Mandarin ended up being something that really stopped the film from properly coalescing. Of course, mileage varies, some absolutely love it. But on the whole, people hope that they will get a different Mandarin, or one that was hinted at in the future. Number 5. Why Thanos Snaps Pun fully intended. So the Infinity War arc made some significant changes to the comics, some due to a lack of characters and others to fit in with the already established lore in the MCU. So in the Infinity War arc, the Infinity Gauntlet, Thanos is in love with death. He has been for a while, and it's actually part of his whole long-standing rivalry and hatred with Deadpool. It is his desire to impress Death and be worthy of her that causes her to seek out the Infinity Stones, which he gets with not too much difficulty to be honest. And he initially sets out to follow her orders to destroy half of the universe's population. However, getting the gauntlet makes Thanos madder than he already was, and he was already the Mad Titan. And he was further enraged when his newfound power still did not draw his love Death to him, and instead made her bow to him but not love him. It's all quite melodramatic, and would not have had much connection to the MCU. So the change of seeking balance, and being driven by what he believes is a solid purpose, Thanos was made more accessible and rounded out to a modern audience, and led to some pretty funny fan activity. A subreddit deleting half its members at random, sexy thick Thanos, it's been a good time. Number 4. Tony's not an alcoholic. So there's a lot going on with Tony in the MCU. He's largely been the focal point, and his arc has been one of the most defined, and that has all managed to occur while skipping one of his iconic comic storylines, the Demon in a Bottle arc, wherein Tony ended up battling with self-esteem issues and alcoholism. And it has become one of the big Iron Man arcs. The MCU removed that and instead went with a PTSD plot. Also for ratings purposes, probably. It's interesting what pushes ratings up and what doesn't. Number 3. Hawkeye's Secret Family So once again we're back in Avengers 2 Age of Ultron. After what appeared to be a very Clintoshy Avengers movie back in 2012 with the first one, it seemed like they were setting up a Black Widow and Hawkeye romance. But the world was instead graced with Clint's secret family. Now in the comics, like many a superhero, Clint gets around, partially as a character trait and partially due to comics aversions to stable relationships partially due to an inability to write them, and also because of the idea that they are narratively boring. Well, the MCU felt that a secret family gave Clint a great motivation and grounded him. It was also a way to give the Avengers a secret safe haven to flee to. This change remains divisive to this day. Secret family. Number 2. The Scope of Civil War The third Captain America film, also jokingly referred to as Avengers 2.5, loosely adapted the 2006 mega storyline of the same name, Civil War. Now in the comics this was quite the event, and there was no way they were going to get all of it on screen, or all of the heroes either. For the film adaptation, the concept of registration or non-registration is fused a bit with the UN Charter idea, which the Avengers did do for a bit in the 90s. And the lines are drawn somewhat ideologically, but mostly because Steve loves Bucky. Stucky forever. It made the conflict more personal, and kept the whole Team Cap or Team Iron Man dynamic. For some it really worked, for others it felt too rushed, and they would have liked to see some of their big moments. However, they worked in what they could, and it did bring in Spider-Man, now in a more Menti Robin-esque role. Also Zemo was there. Cuz. Also, can we just talk about how Steve straight up tried to kill Iron Man? If his arc reactor had been there, he would be dead. Civil War set up a lot of emotional threads that didn't fully come to fruition because again, to quote the Russos, there was no time. Still, it wreaked as much lasting devastation as the first Civil War. So accurate. Number 1. You can touch the Infinity Stones. These stones of seemingly infinite cosmic power are a big deal in both universes, but being able to physically touch them seems to be a bigger deal for the MCU. For example, it took Star-Lord's mixed parentage and the power of friendship to allow him to hold the Power Stone. However, in the comics, for a period of time, each member of the Illuminati had a stone. So Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Professor X, Namor, Black Bolt, Reed Richards, all stoned. Reed tried to destroy them but couldn't. Another roster had it too, featuring Steve Rogers who got to wield the Infinity Gauntlet, and it went badly. The Illuminati is just the worst. Still, this looks like it won't be much of an issue in the MCU. You need to be really extra powered to wield these, or even touch one. Unless they retcon it, because yay, retcons. So those were 10 times that Marvel changed the MCU. There are many, many more. Leave your favorites or least favorites down below. I'm Sasha. Thanks so much for watching Top 10 Nerd. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and check out some more of our nerdy lists. And we'll see you again soon here on Top 10 Nerd. Bye-bye.